it's Beth Hayes, the Pueblo County 4-H coordinator, and I'm out here at my barn today. You can see my horse back there in the background. And today I'm going to be talking to you about what brushes you should use on a horse, why you should use them, why you shouldn't share brushes, and how you can keep all of them clean with a simple, easy task, either out here in your barnyard or even in the sink if you dare to make that much of a mess inside your house. So come on in into my barn and let's see what kind of brushes I have here today. When you start to collect brushes and other grooming tack for your horse, it's really important to keep it all organized. This way, you always have everything you need to properly clean your horse and get that show shine we are all looking for. A little disclaimer here, some of my brushes have brand names on them. None of the brushes or products you see in this video are to promote any type of company or particular brand. Showing these items is purely for educational purposes. So here I have my two curry comb brushes, which is the first brush you want to use when using your horse you either have like a hard rubber one or a metal one the hard rubber is a little nicer because you're not going to have as sharp of a teeth on the horse's skin um, versus this is a lot sharper and can cut through a horse's skin if they don't have a lot here on them to begin with so I really like the rubber ones during like the summer and things like that but like if a horse is shedding out and they have really thick hair it's nice to have a rubber one or a metal one to back up as well so that's what's nice about those, and you use them in a circular motion on the horse's body to get rid of locked in dirt and hair, and it also like starts to distribute the oils on that are on the horse's skin naturally. And you move in a circular motion only on their body parts, because if you do this on like their knees or their face or anywhere where there's hard bony protrusions, it's gonna hurt them and they're gonna move away. So where these are obviously dirty, so we, these are gonna get clean, but this is the first brush you would want to use on your horses. So this is our second type of brush that I like to use on my horse after doing it with the curry comb. This is what is known as a dandy brush. I call it a stiff brush as well. It's a long oval looking brush with really, really stiff uh, fibers and bristles. It's really stiff because this helps whisk away all that loose dirt and hair that you just disturbed on the horse's body with the curry comb. And it also just brings those oils to the surface and everything like that and helps distribute that on their body as well. So they have really stiff, really hard brushes. This is something you can use on their legs and everywhere else. Don't use it on their face, but you can use it everywhere else versus like the curry comb. You only want to use that on like their, the main parts of their body where you don't have those bony protrusions like their knee or anything like that. So again, this brush is very dirty, but we will be cleaning all these soon. And that is our second brush that you can use. The next brush I wanted to talk about here is the body brush. Its bristles are a lot softer than the dandy brush I just showed you. I mean, you can even see physically that it looks a lot softer. And of course, this is just as dirty as all my other brushes, but that's also the whole point of this video is to show you what they look like before they get cleaned and then after uh, so that you can see the difference. These have shorter bristles than the dandy brushes. They're a lot softer. And again, these help remove that loose dirt and hair, help distribute the body's natural oils on their skin to give them a nice shiny glow. And then of course, um, you can have stiffer brush rails on this brush, but they're usually not as hard as the ones you'd find on a dandy brush. So the body brushes are really nice and I personally really like the ones that have a strap because it keeps my hand in place as I go over a horse's body and as you can see I already have hair coming out so I'm just making a mess but that's okay because I'm going to go ahead and clean this one anyway so that is what a body brush is and that's usually the third brush you'd want to use in cleaning a horse and then the last kind of brush that you want to have is this face brush it's a lot smaller it's got super super soft bristles because you're going to want to put it on the horse's face and they usually really like this so again this will get all that extra hair and dirt off their face make their faces nice shiny and you can see the difference here just even in the size and then you can see it in the width of the brushes here i'll stand them up so you can see them so you can see that the texture is incredibly different between these two. So this is that body brush we looked at before, then our little face brush. This one's actually really clean because I just cleaned it not too long ago, um, and I haven't used it on my horse in a while. So this one is nice and clean, and then we'll go ahead and start cleaning our brushes. Besides the brushes you use on a horse's body, you also will want to have a few other helpful grooming tools in your tack box. A brush and comb helps keep their mane and tail smooth and free of tangles. Scissors are a great tool to have on hand that can cut out stickers and other items that can get tangled in their hair too. 
I would suggest you try to get items out of their hair with your hands first, but if it is too tangled, you can always cut it out if you had to. Lastly, you should always have a hoof pick in your tack box as well because this ensures you can easily remove mud and rocks from their hooves before starting your ride. There are lots of other grooming accessories you can buy and use on your horse, but these are the main accessories that every person should try to have in their grooming toolbox. So now I'm just going to take our metal curry comb on my body brush and I'm going to just start raking that hair off. Coming off. Yeah, it's coming off. And I'll shake it a couple times, get that hair off. Because we really want to get as much hair as possible off. That's kind of the goal. And that's where like having the different types of curry combs comes really in handy because you can definitely just use them to get the other hair off your brushes. We'll do that. And we also have like a hairbrush which helps as well. We'll kind of just brush this out. Get a lot of that hair out. We really want to just get like a lot of the main stuff out where it's not going to get back on like a clean horse. So we want to try and make our brushes as clean as we can. Already it looks a whole lot better than how it was. And we'll do this one. You can see the dust coming off this one. Okay, so now, like this one is nice and ready to go. This one is pretty good as well. Got most of all the big chunks. And now we'll just clean it up a little bit more and then we'll go ahead and take it into the sink and start getting it all ready to go. Besides using your metal curry comb, you can also use your rubber one that has the nice handle. And if your body brush has a handle, it's nice because you can literally take it and just do that and again we're just trying to get the majority of everything off so you can do that so either curry comb works really well and then you can also use your little nice comb here just take it and get it through again just try and get the majority of that hair off because again we just don't want it to really stay on there where it's going to spread and cause loose hair to stay on the horse or loose hair to get be put back on the horse after they've been cleaned really well. So that's our goal here. So that's pretty good and now we'll go ahead and get our sink ready and we will clean our brushes. So when talking about biosecurity, I mean that you shouldn't share horse brushes. So this brush was from a Palomino horse. This one was from a white horse and you can kind of see that this one has a little bit of white hair on it in there and then that one has a little bit of the yellow darker hair from the palomino and so i wouldn't ever want to use these brush on the wrong horse so i wouldn't want to use this one on the white horse i wouldn't want to use this one on the palomino horse because that's how you'll spread diseases that are on their skins so for every horse it's best if they have their own set of brushing tools to keep that biosecurity and diseases free from spreading across different animals so that's really important and that's also why you want to keep your tools as clean as possible when you can so that again we limit our spread of disease so once your brushes have been brushed out with the curry combs and the combs, then you will put them in your sink or a bucket, and then you'll want to fill your sink up with soapy water, brush them out with like a nice little sponge and just get them soaked up and nice and rinse through. And then we can put our clean brushes on this other side so they can dry. So we'll do that now. So once we have our water filled up, it doesn't really matter which one you start with. Like for example, I'm going to start with the curry comb because it's kind of the easiest thing to clean. It's got a lot of dust and dirt in it. So I'm just going to get it in there. Just get it nice and soaked up. Make sure it's nice and pretty looking. I'll turn my faucet on. And rinse it off. And then set it to the side because now it's ready to set. So that one can stop. And same thing with the brush. Like I'll go ahead and get that nice and soaked up. It's all nice and clean and sudsy. So we will clean that one as well. The comb again is also really nice. I wish you guys had 3D TV because if you could smell the dirt coming off these, it'd be amazing. Um, but you can just smell all the horse hair 
um, coming off these. I got, you know, our, our metal one. And metal does rust, so you want to make sure that this one does, um, you know, dry properly so that it doesn't stay wet super long. Because again, we're just trying to get it clean, get it nice and shiny, and keep our contamination level low. So that's it for those. And then for our big brushes, I like to start out getting it like that. And then kind of like using the sides of the walls. Because again, as you can see, it really helps get a lot of that stuff out of the brush. Which is the whole point. So then we'll just rinse it off. And you really want to make sure you rinse these off well. Um, so that you don't get any of the soap left on the brush. So it doesn't make an irritant on the horse's skin. So you just want to really make sure you get it sprayed out really good with your hand and like the sprayer if you're using your sink like I am and do it like that so there we have it and we'll do our last one here same thing where we just do it get it nice and sudsy and hard Put it on the side there, and then rinse it off. So we'll do that, and then we're soaping it. And if there's like extra grime on the side, definitely just use your thumb at that point, and it'll come off you know, or it should at least if you've got enough soap going on in your water. And there you go. So now those are nice and dry. Move my sponge out of the way here because I didn't end up needing it. We'll cool our plug. We'll let that drain. We'll let those dry and then they'll be ready to go back into the barn and be ready for our next horse grooming session. So thanks for watching. Keep your brushes clean. Keep in mind our biosecurity tips, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks!